Good morning. Welcome to Monday Morning Coffee and Chat with Hallie Bridgman. I'm so happy you could join me this morning. I have my cup of coffee, so grab a cup of coffee or tea and take a few minutes while we chat. Uh, it's the Monday after Thanksgiving. I hope you had a great weekend. I had Thanksgiving with my daughter and uh, she came home from college and her boyfriend came with her and uh, Greg and the boys. It was It was so nice to have everyone together. That was like my perfect time. And then Black Friday shopping Friday morning. I, it's the first time I've been shopping on Black Friday like that since um, Scott was, it was his first Thanksgiving. And so uh, Greg said, go leave the kids, have fun. And I left the house at five in the morning and got home at like one in the afternoon, which was a long time. <laughs> That's uh you know, eight hours, eight solid hours of shopping. But it was it was a lot of fun because I was alone. I hit like three malls and a bunch of stores and um, finished Christmas shopping for the kids and got a stuff that, uh, like I needed a new microwave. I've never bought a microwave before. Um, Greg had one when we got married that came into the, the, the marriage and then uh, it eventually died and we bought one at an auction. And... Uh, if we paid like three dollars for it, but it kept blowing the circuit of the strip of the um, like the strip. Yeah, I don't know what they're called. And it. So I bought like for the first time in my life. I'm 46 years old. Bought a microwave, a new microwave. Like had to take it out of the box and stuff. So that was kind of fun. And uh, anyway, happy Monday. It's cold and snowy and wet here, and uh, I'm really happy that they still had school because I have a book to finish before, like, the true winter weather hits, and it's the day-to-day -day whether they'll be in school or not be in school. So, last week I answered the question, when did you realize your writing was up to par? And uh, this week, so the same person sent me three questions. The second question was, did you take courses to improve your writing skills? If not, what happened to develop your writing skills? And then what are your criteria to assess your writing skills uh, to determine whether it's poorly written or well written? So um, when I started writing, it was without a plan to write. Like I've said before, I woke up from a dream and I started writing and two years later I had 11 books written. And uh, I didn't even know that there was such a thing as a writing course. It's nothing I had ever investigated. It was nothing I investigated at the time. It was just something that happened and then I started doing. And so I had no indication of, of what was even available as far as writing went. And uh, I just wrote and I read and read and read. And so I... In my writing testimony, I uh, I tried to get published. They, the publisher said, change this aspect about your main character. I didn't want to, so I said thanks, but no thanks. And so I never tried again to get published because I wasn't what I was doing. I wasn't writing for publication. I was writing because these books were in my head and they were overwhelming my brain and the only way to make them stop overwhelming my brain was to write them. And so when I stopped writing, I, st I wrote from 1999 to 2001, I wrote 11 books and I had started a couple more. And then uh, what made me stop reading was I was standing in line at the grocery store and uh, I picked up like a book from my favorite author at the time and read the back of it. And it was the identical plot to what I was writing, except that the roles were reversed. And I thought, oh, I can't read anymore because I'm going to end up like unintentionally taking something or someone will accuse me of it. And that was what what my fear was is that someone would say, well, this book is the identical plot to this other book by this really famous author. So clearly you didn't come up with your plot. And so honestly, I quit writing the book that I was writing and I quit reading. And so uh, 
And that was in 2001. And, and then, you know, life changed and life happened and all sorts of things went on. And I just didn't write again until 2011. So when I pulled out my books to look at them, it had been 10 years since I had touched them. Well, that kind of, of distance from what you've written, you're able to assess more analytically what you're looking at. And so what I, what I assessed was uh, really immature writing that told a really good story. And so at that point, uh, Greg and I were married, and Greg is a brilliant editor. Greg has a gift of editing. He, God has gifted him the same way God gifted me with writing. And what he did was teach me, like, how to not overuse passive verbs, or how to not, or how to find dangling modifiers, or um, how to convey emotion without saying he was sad. So, you know, I could either say he felt sad, which is the, which is, you know, a succinct, you know what I mean when I say it, or I could say something and I'm going off the top of my head, like the, um, emotion overwhelmed him and closed his throat off and he felt the sting of tears in his eyes. Well, that's conveying the exact same information. It just gives more to it. And he, and he taught me, like, looking at my work, it would be, uh, she needs more thoughts. He needs more feelings. You know, this is passive. And so it was, it was a, over the course of months, we had Sapphire Ice working between the two of us. And it was not him rewriting what I had written so that it would be better. It was him saying to me, <clears throat> this would be better if, and look at this and assess it from this point of view and do all of this. Well, you know, at the, and like I said last week, we were both really immature with it, but he was, his gift is really strong and my gift is really strong. And the, together we created this really great story that was passable. It was editable. It was, it was able to be published and very, very, very few uh, critical remarks about um, the writing or the editing, even though later, coming back five years later, when, when we looked at it again after listening to it with from the uh, audiobook and realizing how much work it needed, um, it was it had been done enough to be published. It was fine. So it just wasn't it wasn't it wasn't great. It was fine. And then since then it's been professionally edited. So <clears throat> Um, so that was the beginning of my learning. And so by the time I went to my very first writing conference, I, uh, I had already written 15 books and I had published eight and I went to a class on like character development and I was at this, I was in a national conference and I went to this class on character development and I was kind of disappointed in the fact that, like, I didn't learn anything. And then <clears throat> I went to a plotting class, and it was, like, there was nothing given to me that was different from what I was already doing organically, or that was something that I wanted to, like, take on. And and, and that's what I learned. As I That year, I went to, like, 16 or 17 different, either weekend-long or week-long national, local, regional, whatever, conferences, conventions, writing workshops, determining, you know, and, and what I found out was that I, I did it. I was doing it already and I was doing it organically. And so, um, we, Greg and I, we have published several authors and there was an author that he wanted to publish that he needed work. And so we were at the store buying, um, a book called The Element of Style. He wanted this author to read in The Element of Style. And <clears throat> like I picked it up and started thumbing through it and Greg took it from me and said, I don't want you reading something like that simply because I don't want to interfere with the way that you organically and, and naturally do this. So I didn't 
I intentionally now at this point don't seek out reading what other authors have written about writing. Um, I take workshops in advanced classes for advanced concepts, but I don't, and, but the other things I teach, you know, I teach how to develop character. I teach how to, um, write emotion. I teach how to write suspense, all of that kind of thing. So, uh, and, but where I learned it was reading. And so like when, um, the Hunger Games came out in the movies. My daughter was middle school, I think, and she read them. And so, like, that year for Christmas, I bought her this, uh, um, like, I don't even know if it was for Christmas. It might have been for a birthday. I don't remember. But it was like this behind-the-scenes photo album book thing that would be like a picture of a set and then, you know, just a couple paragraphs. It was all very visual. And she was like humming with excitement over the mo this movie coming out when she saw like the sets and the costumes and the characters. And I was fascinated by that because uh, she, because it was so extreme, you know, the, the set of the Capitol was so extreme and the costumes and the makeup were so extreme. And, and she was thrilled with what she saw. And, and, and then it made me start looking at um, reading articles about it and, and everything. And it, and it made me really curious. And so I went and I read The Hunger Games after we watched the movie. And I saw, you know, how well it was done. And then read all of these positive reviews of, from readers. Not from, not from movie watchers, but from readers. I went to read the books just to see what Suzanne Collins had done to invoke those things images in people's minds in such a way that made these incredibly extreme visual movies. And so that's the kind of thing I do. I, I will read to see what another author has done and then learn from that versus look, sitting in a workshop, you know, creating an outline chart of what I need to learn. Um, but most of it, I will tell you, in all honesty and sincerity, is is a, a spiritual gift from God that he endowed upon me to um, write the books that I write to reach the people that I reach. And if that's one person or if that's a thousand people, it doesn't matter. It was, this is the story you need to write here are the gifts you need to write them. Here's your husband who has the gifts to edit them. And here are the resources you need for the professional formatting or the professional um, the professional editing and the professional uh, everything to create a professional package so that the book has a way to get to the person God intended to read it. And uh, I accept that, you know, so most of it is organic. But also with the design on my end of intentionally improving what I already organically do. There was a, a couple of weeks ago, we were in the Louisville Christian Writers meeting. We have a meeting every month in Louisville. And um, the president's husband gives a devotion. And he said something that so resonated with me. And it was, uh, you have a voice as an author and you need to, uh, you need to exercise your voice and mold it and develop it the same way that a singer does. And so what does a singer do to improve her voice? She, uh, sings. And she listens and she sings and she listens and she sings and she listens. And that's what I do. I write and I write and I write. And just the, the process of writing 26 books at this point, 27 if you count the one that I haven't published yet, I have developed my voice and improved my writing and taught myself how to analyze it analytically so that I can... Uh, present the best product that I, I have the power to present. So 
Um, thank you for that question. I hope that I answered it. I hope that I answered it well. And you guys have a wonderful week. And I will see you next Monday. God bless you.